guys, it's Sarah with Grassroots Evolution Tarot, and I'm here today to bring you a monthly message for the sign of Sagittarius for April 2022. Keep in mind it's a general message. Take what you feel resonates for you, disregard the rest, and go about your day, but remember that no matter what messages come through, my friends, it's still up to you, your active free will, the choices you make, and the steps you take in your world to get whatever fulfillment it is you'd like to see. To me, that's personal freedom freedom, personal power, and it's something that only you can do because this power lies at the tips of your fingers and the soles of your feet, so use that power wisely, my friends. Remember as well that I'm putting April on this for housekeeping, but this is more just what messages Spirit would like to bring through right now, and we are at the end of April, so time is really fluid. For all my subscribers, I love you, love you, love you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for being here. You guys mean the world to me. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. If this resonates and you'd like to see more, I'd like to hang out in my kitchen more often please hit subscribe join the journey with me I'd love to have you along the ride so before I get into the cards today I'm going to take a moment to call in my team of angels Archangel Michael Archangel Metatron as well as my team of light and any of your spirit guides that would be here for the highest good of the entire collective so I ask these guides to guide guard bless and protect myself this reading and any of you who would ask for it my family and your family and everyone at large really to help them bring peace and love into their worlds as well I'm going to ask these guys to use me as the clearest channel possible, delivering messages for the farthest reaching, but only for the highest good of everyone watching. Second rate messages here today, my friends. Peace and um, protection to everyone in the world seems to be something that's pretty big right now. So I have the messages of Life Oracle. We're going to start off with a little spiritual advice, please, for the sign of Sagittarius. What messages would you like to tell Sagittarius or have them know for spiritual advice? Thank you. And you have return to the temple, and they're saying take the bottom, which is remain in the light. This particular card sat in my fridge for like a year. I put it up there with a the magnet because I used to pull this card, pull these cards, and be like, okay, spirit, what do you want me to know? What's the next thing I need to remember? So this time, this might be something you actually have to put up somewhere where you're going to see it all the time too. You don't have the card, but just something to remind yourself that you want to stay in the light. So it says, no matter what happens, I remain in the light without becoming discouraged or angry. I observe. I take time to think calmly and wisely. And I go forward with complete confidence, knowing that I will succeed through consistent, through, sorry, through constantly nurturing my soul. I become a strong and solid being of light. And this constantly is consistently as well. I think that it's really important as well if you start to feel your vibration slipping down, if you're giving into like irrational anger I heard, if you're just starting to notice that your mood is slipping, your vibration is slipping, spirit's like, you know what, this may be a really great time to call on the light. Ask spirit to help cleanse you of this negative or heavy energy, these burdens that are um, surrounding you. This is also energies or entities, that's what I heard in spiritual attack. So when we keep ourselves in the light, when we maintain a high vibration, this kind of energy, it can't attach to us because it is not in alignment with us. So return to the inner temple. It says, I stop destroying myself through negativity and worry. Today I discover my inner self in silence and calmly study the lessons life has provided. I cease to panic and no longer imagine the worst even before something happens. In harmony and light, I return to the inner temple to discover the richness of each step of my life. For some of you, if you get a lot of anxiety as well, that spoke to me right away. It used to be that if, you know, my husband was a little bit late, or this goes back to childhood too, you know, this is probably for me some core wounding. But I would assume the worst, that they're late, oh no, are they in a ditch somewhere, did something bad happen to them? And this kind of stuff, it can set you into a panic attack, full-blown panic. So I feel like it's going to be really important if we're, if, if you are kind of like me and you have a tendency to worry about things, um, this is where it's like spirit saying, hey, that's not good. First off, we're damaging our immune system. We're making ourselves less healthy by giving into the stress, by giving into this worry. So they're, they're reminding me of some things that you could say to help calm yourself in these moments is that I am safe, I am protected, I am loved. And, um... There's another thing you're asking me to tell you. So again, as you can also say that my family is safe. Everyone I love is safe. They're protected. They're loved. So a lot of times, and again, this comes down from like, for me, this is family trauma and stuff that's kind of manifested into this way. But every time I hear the an ambulance, I used to be like, 
my family is safe, they are protected, everyone I love is safe, and everyone I love is protected, because there's this anxiety mind that's going to put to, what is the worst thing that could happen? Well, that someone I love is in that freaking ambulance, or it's going that way. And this is, again, this stuff that can really get into us. So, again, reminding that this is safe, this is protected, this is loved, I am safe, I am protected, I am loved, my loved ones are safe, protected, and loved. And I think it's really important as well to remember, um, what the words I actually heard were is God has a plan. Spirit has a plan. Source has a plan. Your soul has a plan. It set this in motion before you jumped into this earth and this incarnation. So staying positive, staying in the light and trying not to let ourselves get hunkered down with that high, heavy anxiety. I heard depression as well because this could definitely be one of these symptoms that we're experiencing. And... This is making sure that we're not getting discouraged. So it is very difficult when things are not, yeah, when things aren't going our way. Sometimes it is kind of dis difficult to not be discouraged, to not allow ourselves to fall into that energy. What I'm going to say is, all right, you're discouraged. Feel it. You feel discouraged. You feel upset. All right. Now pick yourself up and go, how can I move through this? What can I do to not be discouraged? Is there something that's blocking me in my path towards what I want? Is there some way that I can remove this roadblock? As well as, again, I cease to panic and no longer imagine the worst before it even happens. In harmony and light, I return to the inner temple to discover the richness in each step of my life. This is going to be really important when you find yourself giving into those lower energies, worrying to take a few deep breaths in and reconnect yourself with the light. You may want to breathe in white light down through your crown. Breathe in you know, light and joy and positivity. And with this intention, you set that this white light is going to come down. It's cleansing your body, sending out through your feet into the earth's core and transmuting with love as well as with our breath space we're bringing in positive light energy and with our breath space we're releasing anything that is not of love and light it is not for our highest good and we're asking that to transmute onto the world of love it's really important to clear your energy fields some of you also i heard you may want to have a spiritual bath or something along that line they're telling me what you can do even is smudge um, I'm going to take the bottom, which is strength in the reverse. Underneath that is journey in the reverse. You can, this is selenite. You can kind of, I like to just do this, go all around my body and cleanse my aura. Right? Ask anything that is not of love and light um, or pure to my essence to be released and transmuted out to the world of love. You can smudge yourself with incense, sage, palo santo. Um, for some of you as well, if you're sensitive to smoke, you can, um, oh, what am I thinking of? Get white sage or like Canadian cedar essence, you know, sweet grass, whatever the smell is for you that you would like. And kind of put in a little mister with water and kind of mist yourself, mist the air, mist, mist, mist it. And again, your intentions are so powerful. Set your intentions on what they're doing and this will help. If you are smudging or anything like that, open your window and send it at that window, my friends. So with this energy oracle, we have financial constraints, cornucopia, action. I feel like it's really important to acknowledge as well if you are going through financial difficulties. This is really, really difficult sometimes to not worry about because, man, as much as we, we want to say it doesn't rule the world, money can rule the world. And if you don't have enough of it to cover your what you need for your resources, it's a major point of stress. So I think Spirit's also going here with action. This is... Potentially for some of you, this is um, upward employment, like getting a different or better paying job. And this moves us into this state of abundance. Where I feel more this is, is this could be us needing to kind of have a more positive outlook and positive affirmations. So abundance comes to me, financial freedom and financial security are mine. They are a God-given right for me. I work hard for what I earn. I work hard for what I create and I will see the fruits of my labor. I will see abundance in my life. I will see financial abundance. There's action being made here, and I think that it's just really important, again, as we get our mindset straight. This could be why we have the angel um, of strength in the reverse. And I'm going to grab a message from the book for that one. Number 50. So in the reverse, it says, This card indicates you are not perceiving the truth of your own power. 
Perhaps you're not, you're even seeing yourself as weak or ineffectual. The situation you find yourself in may seem overwhelming, but you absolutely do have the strength to see it through to a successful outcome. Absolutely. Don't fall into any old patterns of giving your power away. When you let others define you or make decisions on your behalf, you take yourself out of the picture of your own destiny creation. Meditate on the brilliant, vibrating light of this angel and recall the eternal power that surges through your life. It's time to take back control. Absolutely. It's time to take back control. If money worries or financial hardships and things like that have really controlled your world and really controlled your mental space, it is time to take back back control. Um, what I heard is you may just really need to budget very well. Look at what needs to be paid first. Is there anything outstanding? You know, are you in um, are you in danger of having your power cut off or your water or anything like that? Is there something that needs to be paid right now? And I think that this is really, really writing on a budget, trying to get yourself ahead. Um, I did hear financially stable as well. And this could even just be that there's things that we want. There's a lot of things we want to do. And what we need to do is kind of budget on how can I make sure that all my bills are paid, make sure that I am upkeeping with my responsibilities so that I'm not going to have stress about these things. And I'm still able to save up for something I'd like to do. For some of you, I heard this is like $10 or $20 a paycheck, depending on how much you make, right? But this is putting something aside. Even if it's like 5 bucks a week, at the end of the month, you have 20 bucks, right? This could be a $20 out of every paycheck. And at the end of the month, you're going to have 80 bucks. Depending on how this works and how you get paid, you may only have 40, but that's still 40 bucks that you could do. For some of you as well, what I heard is you're going to have to budget in entertainment because let's face it, this is something that, um, that we need, to, most of us do. Okay. So what it may be is just that entertainment, your internet bills, so that you can watch YouTube videos and do whatever, stream whatever. But that's still going to be one of the things that you're factoring in is, I need to do this. Okay, they're also telling me it may be important to stay on top of your bills. If you are behind, catch yourself up. You may need to call these bill collectors so that it's not going to creditors and just tell them, hey, I'm experiencing some financial hardship. I need to work out a payment arrangement because I guarantee you if creditors start calling you're going to be way more worried and way more stressed and maybe you already have that talk to them here's what i'm saying is don't ignore it because that's all more of this stuff this ignoring it comes through that it's more and more stressed because we feel more and more looming over us but there is a solution to this issue okay there is something i even heard like credit counselors or debt counselors or things like that you may have debt collectors on your ass too and this isn't really fun right this is really difficult but this is important that we still need to be able to live so if you are feeling discouraged if you are feeling lower vibrational energies because of this try your heart is to work it out again this is meditation baths taking a walk and clearing your head and for me this is, seems to be what helps me sometimes when I get anxiety about things like that it might help you too is again looking through what I have to pay first and what's most important and some of it may be that if there's things that you can't pay this month set them aside for next month but to have a plan Okay, to know this is what I have to do. And when we have a plan and we're tackling it and going towards action, we're going to have a lot better sleep at night. For some of you, I feel like this has affected your sleep. So this is dealing with the issues head on, being confident in us, knowing you have the strength, my friends, to get through this. It's not fun. It's not easy. It's not for the faint of heart. But my friends, the lessons that are going to come from this, they're infinite. And many of you as well, I heard... Again, um, they said to like some of these financial things could be, they said infancy, but it could be that again, like if we weren't modeled how to deal with our finances, if we weren't shown how to take care of our money or how to budget and things like that as an adult, this could get very difficult. Or they're telling me as well, they're giving me the example as well as if we had very little growing up, sometimes when we become an adult, we have our own money, we may overspend a little bit because we never had these things and we want these things but here's also where it's like if we're getting into credit debt we really need to question ourselves on wants and needs i want this yeah do i need it no 
So there's going to be a point what I heard is maturing and this could be where this infancy came from. Just I know that you know in a lot of our younger years when we get, I'll admit it, I spent OSAP on you know school and stuff but I bought some clothes, some shoes, <clears throat> and probably more alcohol than I should have with with my student loans. And here's where I was, I was 18 when I went to school, 18 through 22, you know, I wasn't um, really equipped and prepared to handle that much money and knowing how to budget it out. Okay, so for some of you that may resonate, but this is, I think, taking what we've learned over the years and learning how to budget so that we don't feel like we're without, even if we are kind of tight. Because, I mean, like, I'm sure you guys can agree as well, even if you are cash poor, but you know you got food, you know you got gas money, you know there's some gas in the car to get your ass to work, and you know that your bills are paid, and, you know, there's this sense of kind of um, fulfillment is what I heard. Yeah, we'd like to have a little bit more cash in the pocket, but if everything is taken care of, and we have food, we have shelter, and we're we're able to get through the week. This is where we just need to be like, okay, small steps going forward. It doesn't mean you don't want to have a bigger plan. Okay, I thought we were at 36 minutes. I was like, I need to talk that long. But there definitely does need to be a plan and some sort of action to help us. So I'm bringing in now the Steampunk Tarot. And let's get some clarification on the action. It's six cups. Can you tell me the Six of Cups, please? Can you give me some more clarification on the Six of Cups? So there's one. I'm going to ask for two more cards, please, to clarify, and I'll take the bottom of the deck, and we'll see what messages come through. Two more cards, please. One and two. And the bottom of the deck is the Page of Pentacles. For some of you, I feel like this could be definitely um, a job offer, even though with that Six of Cups there, that this could be a relationship. It's kind of coming back around as well. So put these up. Oh, <laughs> And when I picked this up, I left this on the bottom, the Eight of Wands. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to take the Page of Pentacles as well. With the Six of Cups, we have the first card that came out is the Hierophant in reverse. So some of you right away heard like this Page of Cups in the reverse. Magician in the upright. You have the Page of Pentacles, and then we have this Eight of Wands that I feel like financial abundance really could come out of nowhere for you as well with this Eight of Wands. Just boom, it's coming. For some of you, this you know this is coming. For some of you, you may be feeling financial constraints, but what is coming to you, the abundance that is coming to you, this could be you kind of coming back into alignment with yourself. This could also be a soulmate coming back into your world or someone you're experiencing reunion with but then me this does seem like a very romantic thing with this page of pentacles here as well this is something that's grounded now you have the hierophant in the reverse and the page of cups in reverse to me this speaks of for some of you you may not trust the situation this could be a situation where you have already ended things with this person. And again, like I said, like um, relationship breakdown, divorce, things like that could be where our financials have been affected. And it could be that because of that right now, there's not really this, I don't see you being the one going, hey, I'm going to jump into love, but there's action here. So whether this action is coming from you or someone else, and I honestly feel like this is somebody else bringing in something quick, bringing in communication really quick. Could be a text message as well as what I heard. But I don't feel like you're going to expect it. Even I'm saying this, but, you know, I don't feel like you're going to expect it. Now, the Eight of Wands, they told me August. For some of you, this may be that things are going to start turning around once you get your financial stuff in order. You're no longer stressed. You're emitting a higher frequency. You're emitting more light. And you are realizing, first off, I heard your worth, your value, and how grateful you are to have what you do have. Because there are many people in this world who would kill to have what we have. Even if we're experiencing financial difficulties, there are people in this world who... Um, who definitely, we're, okay, so how I want to put it is we may be struggling with what we have, but there's people in the world who are struggling with what they have, and if they had what we have, that those would be the answers to the prayers. So we want to be grateful for the living position that we are in, 
as well. And what I heard is first world problems. This isn't to say that financial constraints aren't first world problems or that aren't everyone's problems, but this really, I think it goes back to this wants and needs idea with first world problems is if we're trying to budget, right? What is it that I absolutely need again? What is it I don't? And I also heard things like, well, um, if you're struggling to eat and things like that, they're like, okay, <laughs> they're telling me things like internet bill. Um, while we may want to browse YouTube and all those things, if one month we can't afford to pay the internet bill and, and eat, Spirit said, grab a book. <laughs> this magician here with the page of pentacles, though, I do feel like you've manifested this. You're manifesting something wonderful by keeping your ass in the light, by bringing in that, that energy, by, I heard, communicating with the divine and really discovering, again, the richness of each step of your life, taking a new direction. So whatever you're manifesting in here, it's going to bring you back into balance. And I also heard potentially back into an alignment with a soulmate. For some of you, again, though, with this, it may be really questioning the sanctity of marriage. If you're just coming out of divorce or separation, this may also, um, for some of you, and this isn't all of you, but what I heard is this could be somebody that you have already divorced and you're coming back into relationship with them, but it's like, okay, but we don't have to get married again. We can look at this differently. We can manifest differently. And I think that as well as this is using all of the tools that you have. This could also be though, you really, um, this could be a partnership coming in that's really made you question. Whatever it is your moral beliefs as well as your spiritual beliefs. And this could be where we're not quite ready to let that energy um, out into the open. Or we could be a little bit closed off with our heart right now as well because we've been hurt and scorned in the past. So we're, we're really excited to have this back. But I feel like it's just a little bit, what hurt is too soon. And we need to make sure that we're taking small steps towards this. So I'm going to grab more tarot actually. Spirit, can you tell me about the Eight of Wands and the incoming communication? Thank you. So you have Justice, the Tower, and the Nine of Cups. What I heard is you're being welcomed in. Two of swords in the reverse on the bottom. You're being welcomed into something. You're being invited back into something. Something very, very warm. And it's going to make a lot of changes to your world. But I think that whatever changes are coming, that this really is justice. This is the justice you've been looking for. So whatever communication comes to you, whether it's from another person, it could be like, again, a job opportunity that is just like making you feel so full of love. This could be family as well. But the changes that are coming are going to even out the score or even out the balance. So I'm going to end here with a message going forward from the messages of the mermaids on some helping energy towards whatever action is being taken. And you have friendship. For some of you, this is definitely friendship. Your soulmates can be love, they can be friends. You know, we can definitely have friendship soulmates. And this is asking you to lean on your friends, to make hang out with people that make you smile and laugh. It could even be, you know, a long lost friend or a friend from a while back saying, hey, I'm sorry, you know, I realized that I messed up or hey, I'm sorry, I haven't talked in a long time. I've had really a lot going on. And this is the kind of thing that, you know, you're like, yeah, me too. You have contentment and magic is how I saw it. I feel like this goes down straight with the magician as well. The world responds to you and your energy. So when we're putting out great energy, we're bringing in magic as well. We are magic. Don't forget that. We are magic. We harness this power right here between our hands. And they're also showing me kind of like the give off here, but this um, energy this feminine energy to me, this magic ball, it's also lunar energy. So for some of you, you may want to use the the moons for, um, you know, your magic. They're telling me too, I think we're coming up on a new moon soon. So this would be a really wonderful time to kind of sit down, especially if it has financials on it. Go, okay, what are the goals going forward? What would I like to accomplish? How are some, what are some steps I can take to do this? And I'm going to start. 
you know, how can I start this and really use that moon energy to help you manifest this. So the bottom, again, is contentment. And I feel like for some of you, you haven't been content in a long time. But our goal is here. Again, they bring me back to, I seek to get out of panic. Because it is just say, you know what, we're radically accepting where we are and we're content with what we have. We're content with where we are and what we're trying to manifest. So whatever changes are coming in right now, I feel like they're for your highest good. They're ones that are going to make you feel really loved, okay? They're going to make you feel cherished. And I do think that you have been trying to bring this energy back in. But I think that it is, again, it's what energy has got in our way um, that's, that's kept this from, from coming into fruition. So that's the message I have. I hope it resonates. I love you all, and I will talk to you later. Mwah. Bye, guys.